I want to talk about your story, and I want to talk about the publication, and maybe we can even get to your Academy Award nomination with Dirty Wars as well. But let's start with the story that you've come out with. You've come out with sort of something that is near and dear to the technology community, the notion that technological intelligence only is being used by the NSA to order drone, drone strikes. Right. I think a lot of Americans are under the perception that with the drone program, we know the individuals who we're tracking, that they are involved with acts of terrorism, and that the drone strikes are a better alternative to sending in uh, U.S. military forces. What we found in our investigation that in part is based on two sources from within the U.S. military that worked on the drone program, as well as documents provided to us by the NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden, what we determined is that in many cases, uh, what the U.S. military or the CIA are doing is simply using the metadata provided by the NSA's satellite technology or fake cell phone towers that have been put on the bottom of drones that are used to track down either SIM cards or handsets uh, of mobile phones. And in many cases, the U.S. does not even know the identity of the individuals using these phones or in possession of the phones. They simply have built a web uh, of their social network uh, uh, tracking, and they're basically targeting people on the metadata. Where was this phone? Who is this phone in contact with? And if enough of the what they call selectors are ticked off, uh, then they, these people can be cleared for a drone strike. So in many cases, the U.S. is actually targeting people because of the metadata uh, activity and not necessarily because they know that they are a terrorist involved with criminal activity. Yeah, the, the notion that, that technology has its limits, right? I mean, it's, it's as old as the NSA, the human versus the SIGINT, the human intelligence versus the signal intelligence. Is this a sort of a... a, a the mastery of signal intelligence, of, of technology over human intelligence? Well, you know, the, the U.S., going back to the beginning of, uh, of the founding of the Republic, in some form or another used signals intelligence, and it's always been a major part of U.S. military operations. Um, but what we're seeing now with the uh, rise of the use of drones um, and the ability of the NSA to tap into fiber optic cables around the world, to penetrate mobile phone networks, uh, to track SIM cards to within a few feet, uh, of the of the user um, is is that I think we're we're entering an age of sort of pre-crime where people can have a profile built on them based on their usage of their computers of their electronic devices and instead of actually knowing the identity of the individual we're targeting them based on the activity uh, uh, that that they're engaged in on the internet or with their handheld devices. It also seems that the sort of the sales of uh, what well, was once the sales of arm merchants and and, and sort of military uh, uh, businesses is a lot more of the companies that we cover here up in Silicon Valley. The, those are the companies that are providing the tools for this kind of research by the NSA. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is a booming industry, as your report just showed. I mean, you know, with Amazon talking about now using drones to deliver their products. But, you know, let, let's, let's remember one thing that we've seen is that as everything goes digital, uh, from medical records to intelligence files, uh, what we've seen with hackers, with whistleblowers, um, is that there's this sort of cyber war going on. And, uh, you know, on, on the one hand, the U.S. can use these drones uh, as a bombing alternative to sending in actual pilots in these planes that could be shot down. On the other hand, uh, I think it's just a matter of time before we see hackers, including those sponsored by nation states, maybe Iran or China, actually hacking into the U.S. drone program and redirecting these drones. And uh, that, that, I think, is going to really call the question on this. Well, one other point, Corey, is that um, more than 80 countries around the world right now have weaponized drone technology. Uh, thus far, only the United States, France, and Israel are known to have actually used these drones. But it's a matter of time before another nation state uses them. And I, then I think it's going to cause a real debate on uh, the morality, the legality under international law of using this technology to kill people. So uh, I want to switch uh, to talk about your publication. I think The Intercept is a very interesting thing up here. Remember, of course, eBay founder backing it. You and Glenn Greenwald uh, founding the publication. Glenn Greenwald, of course, has uh, come to be known internationally for his breaking of the NSA PRISM story. Talk to me about this publication, what you're trying to do, and what the business model behind it is. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, Pierre Omidyar, uh, the founder of eBay, uh, for a long time has wanted to get into the world of media. And, uh, and it's interesting. It was sort of fortuitous. At a time when Glenn Greenwald and myself, about six months ago, were talking with our colleague Laura Poitras about building a news organization that would have an inherently adversarial posture uh, toward the state when it came to violations of the First Amendment uh, and the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution, um, Pierre Omidyar reached out to Glenn Greenwald through a mutual friend, uh, and he had long followed Glenn's work on Twitter and was always retweeting him, and basically said, hey, I'm thinking of starting a news organization. Would you guys want to uh, collaborate? 
collaborate in some way. He didn't envision uh, building a news organization with us. He just wanted us to basically collaborate. And Glenn and I were in Rio at the time where Glenn lives, and we had a conversation that night and said, you know, let's, let's pitch uh, Pierre on this idea uh, that we, we could work with him and to try to build a news organization. And so at first we were talking about uh, building this much broader picture news organization with sports and entertainment um, and, and politics and then our national security reporting. Um, but what Pierre and his team uh, came up with, I think, is a brilliant idea, and that is that Pierre is going to create, under the First Look Media banner, several digital magazines that are each going to have, be led by seasoned reporters or journalists in that area, and they're going to build infrastructure around those individuals. And so The Intercept is the first site that Pierre has launched, and, uh, and that's right. the site that's being edited by myself, Glenn, and Laura Poitras. Jeremy, really quick, uh, we just have 30 seconds here, but uh, you've got a, a, a movie, a Dirty Wars documentary, nominated for an Academy Award. Do you imagine that as part of what you're doing at Intercept as a multimedia approach? Oh yeah, absolutely. We are. I mean, we're we're at the beginning stages of this. We envision working with uh, all kinds of uh, of visual data activists to do data visualization to accompany our pieces. Laura Poitras is also an Academy Award nominee and a filmmaker. We're going to build a film division. Uh, you know, we're in a very exciting world now right. in new media, and I think that the sky's the limit. And we're looking forward to the future.